Hey everyone, many times today you'll hear about Entra ID integrated or enterprise authentication, OAuth 2.0, and it may not be clear what it is or why you care. So this video is a beginner's guide to Entra ID. Now, when I think about Entra ID, it was born in the cloud. So I've got my Entra ID and it was designed for the various cloud scenarios we have. Now, yes, it used to be called Azure AD, but that was a terrible, terrible name because it was not part of Azure, nor was it really related to the on-premises Active Directory. So we won't talk about that again. Now, at the most basic level, I can think about using this to manage what I think about are my users and my devices. And once I have these, I can then control the access to resources, to applications by giving them certain roles. Now, when I say a user, these typically represent a human being, but it could also be a non-human. It could be, for example, an application or even an agent. It could be an agentic AI, an autonomous agent. And these applications, these AI agents, they need their own identity so they can be given strict control to only the resources they need. And I have the ability to audit exactly what they're doing. Sometimes they'll work on a human's behalf, but sometimes they need to act on their own. Now, these identities that I'm talking about, they could absolutely be born in the cloud. They only exist in the cloud, but also potentially, I still have my on-premises, for example, my Active Directory, and I may have my users, groups, devices, and what I wanna be able to do is synchronize those users, devices, groups up into the cloud. And as your maturity shifts, as your identity posture starts to become more and more cloud first, well, I can even start to replicate the other way today with groups, but that's gonna build on in the future. I also can think about this, there are rich group capabilities. So I talked about users, I talked about devices, but also we do have groups. I can add users into groups, I can add devices into groups, and then give the group permissions to do things. There's very rich lifecycle management capabilities. I can think that, hey, I have my HR system. That's probably the source of truth for everything related to those human beings. So we can tie our HR system into our identity solution to automatically provision users, those humans, as they join the company. Then there's rich life cycle management and governance to perform actions as they join, as they move around different roles and eventually leave the organization. Now I've talked about users and devices. What also is gonna happen here, there are many other services in the cloud. Some of them might be Microsoft services, some of them third parties, and these all trust your particular Entra ID tenant, your users, your groups, your devices for their identity purposes. There are a vast number of applications and services that come pre-integrated. And for those thousands that are pre-integrated, but you have something special, you can even add your own custom application. And when there is some service that has its own identity solution, we use something called federation. And all that really means is, hey, there's some local identity that gives a user or a service an authentication, a token. Hey, you've proven you are who you say you are. And federation just lets me swap the token generated for this identity provider with one generated by Entra ID. So then that identity can seamlessly now access resources that have been given roles for the Entra identity. It's all about making it very, very seamless. And the huge benefit here is by having all of these various services, either directly or through federation, well now the Entra ID identity is the only one you have to worry about. 
me as a human being, I'm not worried anymore about huge numbers of different passwords and sign-ins I have to manage. Me as that human being, well, I just have one authentication. So what that gives me as the human is this idea of a single sign-on. I don't have to remember 10 different logon names and 10 different passwords and 10 different ways to sign in. I have a single sign-on experience. I can move between different applications. It's completely seamless to the human being. That's beneficial to me as the company as well, because now I can focus on the single identity that represents the user and bring all of my auditing, all of my controls, all of my machine learning to understand what's normal for them to help protect that identity. So it's great for the user, they don't get MFA fatigue or password fatigue, but it's really great for me as the organization to focus all of my protections on a single identity and not have to worry about what's going on all over the place. And when I hear about OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect and SAML, these are just happening behind the scenes by Entra to facilitate the ability to integrate with all these other services and capabilities. As services are moving outside of your network, the identity becomes that critical security perimeter. Therefore, Entra has a lot of capabilities to help ensure the human or non-human really are who they say they are. That's the authentication, the proving you are who you say you are. And so a big part of this is, yes, there's single sign-on, but we think about multi-factor authentication. Maybe that's using authenticated applications or one-time token generators, maybe it's a text or voice. But also increasingly, we think about pass keys. Pass keys are a fairly new emerging standard, but they're phenomenal that it helps protect the user from being tricked, from being fished by a bad actor. Because of a pass key, hey, that device I'm using the pass key with has to have a proximity to the device actually being authenticated. So I can't be tricked to authenticating someone hundreds of miles away. I can even protect sensitive important roles with just in time. I only get a permission when I need it with things like privilege identity management, and I can need a higher, stricter form of authentication. And then around all of these different integrations, all of these fantastic things is really a superpower. And we call it conditional access. But think of this as this barrier around anything I'm trying to be authorized, i.e. I have a certain permission to do actions on that thing, Conditional access will protect anything that is integrated with Entra. So for example, I might wanna do various checks on, is the device I'm using healthy? What is the risk? The risk based on what is normal for this identity to actually sign on? Where do they sign on? What times, what sort of apps do they use? AI, machine learning, is learning what's normal for the user. What's the risk of the overall identity? Has it done other things in the past that seem a little bit suspicious? And so we have these various conditions that have to be met, and then I can have additional requirements. Hey, I'm seeing some heightened risk. Let's make them do a stronger form of authentication, or actually that identity seems compromised. Let's make them change their password. And anything that leverages Entra can take advantage of this. Yes, these cloud applications, but it could be saying on-premises that I'm integrating with Entra through things like private access. It could even be other internet services that aren't integrated with Entra, but I can use Entra internet access to still bring them under the umbrella of that Entra protection. So ultimately, Entra helps centrally manage all of the various identities, human and non-human and your services, your applications across the organization. When you hear about zero trust, Entra ID is a key part of ensuring any identity you have is verified every single time it's trying to perform some access to a service or resource but in a completely seamless manner for the user. I hope that helped sort of give you a, a base understanding of what Entra is. Till next video, take care.